Hey everybody, what is going on? How you guys doing? How you guys doing? What's up guys? How's it going? We are back. We're back. We're bad. I'm black. I'm mad. I was having a little bit of trouble with my background here. It's been a little bit of a trial, I have to say. I'm still not liking how bright things are coming out. I may have to fix that just a little bit. Um, but all of that, I gotta say, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, and welcome to the dark side of the room where we talk about a lot of deep stuff. Deep, 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 deep stuff. So, I am Solar Gray, and let us get to some of this. Let us see if I got this right. All right. So, ooh, no, 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 that's way too dark. Um, so yeah, I'm still doing a couple of things that I gotta like brighten up and, you know, I'm trying not to saturate color way too much and all that jazz, but yeah, it's a thing. It is most definitely a thing. So, welcome to the dark side of the room. As you guys saw on the Twitch, um, Twitch thing, we are back. We are back on Twitch. I'm liking it here. Um, there's been a lot of stuff that was going on with Copa, and the biggest thing is I want this show to be kid-friendly, but the consequences for making a mistake are 42,000 times too big a risk. That That's one of the reasons that I had to, um, I had to do something a little different today. So, with that, I decided to come back to Twitch, that's always been good to us, and, um, we're going to talk about the show and a lot of things that are going on. So, we're going to do just a little bit of an experiment as well. But first, let us get down to the business part. Um, yeah, I get all these notifications because I wasn't wise enough to put my phone on silent. There we go. Um, yeah, let's get down to business. First off, I want to thank all of you guys for showing up. This has been a real treat and a real thing. So, what I'm doing right now is I am going to turn the music down just a little bit, but we're going to have just a little bit of a thing. But um, if you guys want to join us on the show, that would be awesome. Um, but if you guys really don't have it in you to, what is the term I'm looking for, um, interact or chat or do any of that stuff, I understand. But if you want to reach out, that's cool. Just pull up a keyboard and turn the music back up a little bit. Pull up a keyboard and type in back in the deck at gmail.com. That's ooh, what the crud happened here? Let's do that one more time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, no wonder. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're just gonna destroy that there. Um, yeah, just have the thing. Yes, 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 we're gonna do that. Um, oh, wait. Yeah, we're having a thing. But yeah, pull up um, back in the deck at gmail.com. And that is B A C K I N T H E D E C K at gmail.com. And of course, you guys can pull up. Oh, no wonder. Let me just fix that real quick. And that's so much better. That is so much better. So yeah. Um, again, we've been having a little bit of technical stuff going on here with the stuff that we're working on uh, we've been working ourselves a little bit crazy but yeah check us out at back on the deck at gmail.com that's b-a-c-k-i-n-t-h-e-d-e-c-k -E -E at gmail.com thank you for showing up here on twitch uh, we're going to ask you guys to head on over to the facebook um, and of course, join the group, The Deckers on the Book. We occasionally do live streams directly to that group. And of course, that is a very good way for you guys to meet each other and make friends and do all that jazz. Um, hit us up over on the SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash BID underscore P where you guys can hear the audio of our stuff and I get a lot of stuff all the time people going well I want to watch your stuff but I can't it's just a bunch of talking heads and the visuals are boring and blah 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 and I'm like okay listen to it on SoundCloud um, but we'll get into that a little bit later on today and of course um, head us up over on Instagram that's BID underscore P just look for Instagram 
Um, you do the search in for BID underscore P, you'll see us. We've been doing some other stuff. For those of you guys that are um, into helping us out maybe a little bit and all that stuff like shannon boom boom lay that's boom chicka boom boom um you guys can head up head over to patreon.com slash bid underscore p and of course this is us making videos and stuff and you guys can help support us it really does help out a lot and i hate saying that because every person on youtube says it really helps us out a lot but i can give you guys specifics as to what stuff we'll pay for and all that jazz but more to the point um you know that is definitely a way to help us out you'll get access to polls and patreon only stuff and of course um head on over to the soundcloud that's right you can head on over to the soundcloud and get a whole bunch of our audio recordings of all of the stuff that we got going and you guys can listen to it download it keep it for yourself we're going to be hitting some more podcast um platforms but that's as soon as i can figure out how um what i have to sign up with how much money i'm going to pay it's a lot of stuff it's a whole lot of stuff so oh my god this is that was terrible that was terrible what was that um mm -hmm. oh no wonder yeah that's a thing so um so yeah that's that's the big thing that i want to do and talk with you guys about of course because there are so many things that we have coming down the pike now today i'm gonna let you guys know i've been a little sick i've been down with um i've been down with various um what is the term i'm looking for um with various ailments of course i've been um ooh, yeah that's a little better yeah all right i'm back yeah i've been down with various ailments um so i've been trying to get better um in that respect and um a lot of stuff has went wacky now for those of you guys that don't know um there was a new thing that came out on um youtube like a week two weeks ago and that was the copa um ruling or copa sopa um it was something pa in a nutshell it made life very difficult and we're almost at a point where we're where youtube is looking at another ad apocalypse and um that is in and of itself kind of a big deal because if another ad apocalypse happens then some people lose subscribers some people gain subscribers it's always always a big to do so what we're doing instead of um instead of doing um freak outs about a lot of different things what we are doing is um heading straight on over um back to here which again twitch has always been nice i'll be uploading stuff from um you know i'll be uploading stuff to this place for a long time and i'll be uploading the stuff that we do here back on youtube for the people that haven't been able to um what is the term um for the people that don't watch us here on twitch i'm sorry for the inconvenience it's a thing i know and i'm trying i'm really really trying so the first thing I got to do here is um, I have to, there we go, there we go. Yeah, we'll go right there. Um, yeah, so yeah, this is the thing that I'm doing here. And hey, look at that, we're back. Although I don't really like the aspect ratio that we're recording in, but this is a big thing that we're doing. So we'll get all this stuff done. We'll get this stuff worked out and yeah. But anyway, today I said that we're gonna be talking about a few things. We're going to be talking about foot dragging, trauma, and a few other things. Now, to start that out, okay, to start that out, um, God, I hope more people show up today because, man, I, I am, I, I feel really unprofessional. Again, I apologize to you guys. We'll make this work. Um, but I thought about a couple of things. Now, one of the aspects of what we do here at Back in the Deck is we get new games and stuff and we try and teach them to people that wouldn't otherwise have access to them. 
And there is, over the years, there have been quite a few things that have made this kind of thing difficult. Um, and that's why today's, today's episode is very much about dragging feet. Um, there has been a new game that's come out um, from Atomic Mass Games that we are digging. Oh my god, we're digging. We're digging a game. We're digging a thing. Um, and this game is called Marvel Crisis Protocol. Um, this is a miniatures game featuring Marvel superheroes. They're starting out with the Avengers. And um, yeah, look at these models. Whoever painted them are amazing. And that ain't me. I'm not that guy. Um, and essentially, the, um, the game itself is very much... Um, a skirmish based combat game with little miniatures and stuff like that and you know you put your stuff on a board and you play and it's like yeah it's a little bit like hero clicks but it's like the next level and that's going to be the game that we're featuring for the next little while at least so what we're doing is um with that this is a game that I kind of I discovered it a couple of weeks ago and it turns out this game came out on November 15th and that's big okay November 15th that's big that's huge that's like wait this came out on the 15th um, brand new to the market which means no one is an expert at the game yet and this is a fantastic time to teach people a new game um, a lot of the times what I've noticed over the past 15 to 17 years is when I try and take a game into a new environment people like the games people end up liking the games when they finally get around to playing but one of the things that makes them drag their feet the one of the issues that causes trepidation is will i learn this game quickly like how easy is it to learn and if i lose will i feel stupid okay and this is a big thing. This is a huge, 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 huge thing. Because, um, again, I take this stuff into disenfranchised areas. So, you go to the ghetto that isn't known for the quality of their educational system. And you get a bunch of kids that would rather be playing video games or rather be doing anything other than what you're trying to show them. And they tend to drag their feet on having an open mind, if you will, okay? Um, and one of the most important things I've learned is that once a mind is closed, okay? Once, once a person's mind is closed to um, any new ideas, they get locked exactly where they are, okay? And a lot of the people from my neck of the woods or who grew up in my culture, and possibly your culture too, depending on where you're from, they tend to have grown up unhappy and resigned to it, okay? Um, I talk with a very, very good friend of mine. I consider him a mentor. And I ask him like hard political questions. And the one thing that he said that stuck with me is when you argue with a lot of people, you're arguing you are arguing your experiences versus their beliefs okay and we live in a time where people believe in a lot of stuff <laughs> they believe in a lot of stuff and they believe in it really really hard and um if you're wondering what that means it's simple um i have lots of friends that i've been playing games with for over 20 something years um and for some reason when it comes to a new game or something that isn't already in their wheelhouse of passion, they just, they're just not with it. And a lot of my friends aren't gamers because they like to smoke marijuana. And they're good smoking marijuana, getting couch locked, and just sitting there. Um, and when I come around, I'm like, hey, I got this new thing. Let's do something. Because, you know, I'm very much a doer. Okay? I, I like to do things. And 
part of that is because I grew up not having a lot of options to do things. And another part of it is I tend to have to travel to see my friends. So riding a motorcycle through cold weather or sometimes rain for a half hour to an hour to an hour and a half to get to them so that they can just sit there and chill or relax or kick back. Um, it really feels like kind of a waste of my time. And I don't want to sound super elite or anything like that, but it really comes down to um, there's a lot of stuff that I would rather be doing than to um, than to literally just sit around and not doing a whole lot. Okay, and it's a it's a personal thing. So I bring games and stuff like that, and I reached out to one of my boys, Mike, over at Nerd Soul. And I'm like, hey man, I want to teach you this game because you're in the comics. Um, we do a lot of stuff. We have cross-platform things, you know, and we're going to be filming battle reports, possibly streaming them live on Twitch. That all depends on what locations I can get and what their internet strength is. And um, he was very much dragging his feet. He was like, well, I'll know his thing. It's it's. I, I don't know if I want to do that because. You know, it, it might be hard to learn or I'm afraid to lose. And I'm like, okay, I get that. And this is where I thought about today's topic. Because when a person drags their feet at something they don't absolutely want to do, it gets me thinking about our modern times, okay? In this day and age, um, the year of our calendar 2019, we've got a lot of options to do a lot of things okay and it's really easy to get caught up in what's the term i'm looking for this attention-based economy if you will this idea that if a person doesn't snare your attention in four seconds then no that's it that's it you just gotta go gotta go it's done right and i'm kind of thinking you know that could be a little problematic um because when I think about these things, I look at the stuff that people have the options to do. And they're right. They have a hundred different things that they could do. A hundred, a thousand, you name it. They can do a whole bunch of different stuff. But one thing that I have noticed above so many other parts is that all of the things that they could do when it comes to learning new stuff are mainly solo activities. You know, um, this game isn't really super passionate about it, so I'm gonna go watch a video. I'm gonna go watch Netflix. I'm gonna play on my phone. I'm gonna do something that separates me from anyone else around. And I started thinking, you know, have we gotten to a point where we drag our feet because we're afraid of how others perceive us, okay? Um, you know, when I was growing up, there was very much a huge thing about sports, you know? We, when we would play sports at school and the winners would be like, we won, we won, we shot the BB gun, you know? And, um... If you won, you were awesome. If you lost, you were babies. But one of the things that was never really pushed in my generation was the enjoyment of the game win or lose. Now, where did I learn it? I have no idea. <laughs> I really don't. I don't I don't know where I picked it up. I think, in all honesty, I think I picked it up um, from watching Mr. Rogers or Sesame Street or something. Um, or it could have been from the Mickey Mouse album Splashdance. We never know. Um, but one of the things I noticed was I enjoy playing games win or lose and in all of my years of gaming I come across people who drag their feet on learning something new because they're afraid of losing um, I went into investigation about this and I didn't do like a peer-reviewed study or anything like that but one of the things I noticed a lot of the times is um, with so many games that are out there, specifically miniatures games, be it Heroclix, Warhammer 40k, 
um, Mordheim, um, uh, what is, what is, uh, Battlefleet Gothic, um, Orc Ball, um, the World War II reenactment miniatures games, War Machine. Um, there are intense tournament communities that are around. And within the confines of a tournament, it's about winning quickly and efficiently and sportsmanship within those environments means something different than what I learned. It's different to what I've learned. And um, it's very competitive, very cutthroat. I haven't really seen much enjoyment in tournaments over the years, except for like the card game Highlander. Those guys are super awesome and they're really fun to play with. And everybody at the table has fun, win or lose. Um, but a lot of other tournament scenes, I've never really seen people enjoying the game. I've seen them being angry. I've seen them be frustrated. I've definitely seen them be disappointed. But I've never seen them enjoy the game. Y y you see what I mean on that? Um, and this, from what I've seen in my region, has nurtured such an environment to where if winning isn't possible, people don't want to start. And um, that makes me sad. It really does. It makes me sad because um, there are so many experiences that a person can have with other people out there. But I don't know when it happened, but we garnished, we garnered and nurtured this paradigm, this idea that states unless you can absolutely win and dominate out of the gate, then it's not worth your time. And I'm going, what happened to learning? You know, what what happened to learning? Um, when my friend, you know, hit me up and he asked about um, or I asked him about the game and he's like, I don't know, man, I don't want to lose and all that stuff. And I'm like, dude, the game is less than two weeks old. No one is amazing at this game yet. <laughs> um, and it's true. Like I said, the game hit the shelves on November 15th. And, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of what I've wanted from other miniatures games. And, um, yeah, I'm, um, I'm a fan of that in the sense of, I like playing with toys. That is, that is what I like. Um, but one of the things I don't like is, um, the stuff that I play with not feeling properly. You know, that, that's one of the things. It's like, does this outer space game feel epic? Does this superhero game feel super heroic? You know, and with, um, and with this stuff, I mean, these models just, they look amazing. You know, they really do. They look amazing. They seem amazing. And every game that I've played has just been super fun. You know, the game itself has been super fun to play and I'm all about having the fun. So this is one of the things that I kind of, I'm, I'm putting out there for people. And I taught someone how to play. And one of the things I noticed from a lot of new players are a lot of, and that this, uh, uh, again, I look at the world through the lens of playing games. Um, there are many social cues about people being interested that I'm learning, or should I say, not interested. Um, and these things are becoming hard sells. You know, they really are. Um, one of the things that I've noticed is like, there's this idea where someone has always got to show um, their superiority. You know, they have to show their superiority. It's like when they're, um, when they are looking at new games or they're looking at something new, um, the first thing they do is look for a flaw. I taught someone how to play this particular game a couple of days ago, and they're like, okay, well, there's a size thing. Um, look at the size. Um, 
and they're like, this doesn't make any sense. How can Captain America be the same size as Black Widow? Bah! And I'm like, dude, you're just looking at the cards. You know, you're looking at the cards. Like for the purposes of this game, all regular size people are the same size. Where miniature people like Ant-Man would be a size smaller and huge things like Ultron would be the next size up. And they're like, oh, well, yeah, that that's a thing. And um, I've noticed that when a person is resisting something new, it's almost like they live in a place of bad faith arguments. And it makes me sad to hear and see that because they close themselves off to a whole bunch of cool stuff. And the older people get, the more I see that they do this. A good amount of my gaming circle are in their mid 40s and older, okay? And um, I talked to them about how they became gamers and where they learned how to game and stuff like that. And I noticed a massive amount of trauma that came through. Um, the people that they played games with that sort of set the foundation for their paradigm played games in the idea of win at all cost, even if there was no criteria for victory. How can this be, you might ask? Well, it's simple. In, say, a role-playing game like Dungeons & Dragons or Vampire the Masquerade or something, um, competitive players or players that are bent on victory set their own criteria for victory, whether or not the people that they're playing with know that that's the thing. They set their own rules for winning and they do everything they can to win under those criteria and this a lot of the times come from their um it comes from their personal trauma but they inflict a lot of trauma on other people um i'm i play a lot of games as you guys know um i play a lot of games i test a lot of games to see if they'll be good for um taking to community centers and stuff like that and um one of the big contentions that are out there right now is this weird loyalty war between Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition players and players that were playing Dungeons and Dragons at the 3rd edition and then they went to Pathfinder. Now, Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition is very streamlined um, and Pathfinder is very granular. The difference between these two things is with Pathfinder, you know exactly what you can do because there is a stat on your character sheet that has a three paragraph description and it um it makes it very clear if you don't have that thing then you can't do that thing and dungeons and dragons currently has broader comparisons okay so instead of say use rope You'll have athleticism or nature, GM's choice, that kind of thing. Um, and I currently play with a Pathfinder player playing his first game of 5th edition. And in our last game, he did some awesome stuff with his character that he wouldn't have been able to do in Pathfinder. And I saw on his face, there was fun. He was seriously enjoying himself. And when I say enjoy, I mean um, he he had joy. There was actual joy, real enjoyment. Um, I had a terrible game, don't get me wrong. But he truly enjoyed the game that we were playing, although it wasn't the game that he was used to playing. But he's been dragging his feet on this for years. And um, one of the things I definitely notice, and I do this myself, you know, there's always a bit of trepidation. There's always a little bit of, I'm not sure if this is what I want to do um, when it comes to playing games and things like that. But quite honestly, and this is, this is real talk, this is a real thing. When it comes to that trepidation, it's really good, really good. Um to question why 
what are you actually afraid of? Are you afraid of being embarrassed? Are you afraid that you won't understand? Do you just not care and you're humoring someone because you don't want to hurt their feelings? That's understandable. My suggestion, and I'm not a doctor, is if you decide to humor someone, do it all the way. You know, commit to the experience if you're going to give something a shot. You have to give it a fair shot. You know, um, you know when we were kids and, well, specifically teenagers, and we're listening to the music that we like and we're trying to let our parents hear the music that we like in the hopes that they can get a better insight as to the types of people that we are. Okay, you guys get that? Um, there's a great scene in the movie Velvet Goldmine where the song comes on and Christian Bale is like turning on the song and he's looking at his dad and he's like, that's me, dad, that's me. You know, um, some kids in, in my generation did that with the Rush song subdivisions. Um, but when we have that, that feeling that we had, that pain that we had, when our parents seemed like they were just shining us on, like, okay, yeah, yeah, whatever, kid, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. That's the same thing that we can transmit to our friends trying to show us anything new. Um, at risk of sounding like a stand-up comedian, anybody in a relationship has gone through this experience. It's just one of those things. Anybody in a relationship, every time your significant other said, hey, honey, check this out, and you're going, ugh, I don't want to watch the football game. I don't want to go to the sports movie. I, or I don't want to go to the sports thing. I don't want to watch the horror movie. I don't want to go to the opera. No, I don't want to go to this, you know? And we get this idea that humoring them, like going, um, giving it a shot is good enough, but it isn't. Um, doing humor, you know, hu humoring someone, but having a bad attitude, having a condescending attitude, just having the uh, 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 moment, um, that can take away the enjoyment from the person that's trying to share something with you um there's a youtube channel out there i love these guys i really do they're called lost in vegas and the number one thing they talk about is having an open mind and their channel is simple they listen to a bunch of music they've never listened before they've never listened to before and they listen to the music with an open mind and they give you like their real reactions to it. They're like, I like this, I don't like this. I was into this groove, I wasn't into this groove. But they give everything a shot with an open mind. You know, their fans are called free thinkers, Deckers. And um, these guys are really cool. I recommend checking them out. Um, you know, I might put a link somewhere, but yeah. And um, I mean, my mind isn't all the way open you know a lot of people are like well if you're up for an open mind so much why don't you play tournaments i'm like because i did for 15 years and i haven't seen anything change so um but occasionally i'll go and i'll play a tournament and sometimes most times i walk away feeling exactly like i did every time um and the rare occasion i might have that joyous experience the experience of be of you know, looking in my heart and in my heart seeing joy, you know? Um, but that's the thing. But all of this stuff comes down to me observing that people are trying to protect themselves from trauma. They're trying to protect themselves from the embarrassment of being laughed at a lot as kids. There are a lot of people that grew up south of me that I see that in all the time. Um, Sometimes they're trying to avoid the trauma of the angry parental figure that's like, you have to win. If you don't, you know, second second place winner is first loser, blah, 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 blah. And um, I've seen that behavior, but not growing up within that paradigm exactly. Like I went home to a house most of the time where I was alone or I had my great grandparents. Um, so I didn't have that at-home pressure of win, you have to win. I had that with grades and I still failed. So, um, but, um, but I, I was never part of any sports teams. I never, I, I never 
really made the cut for anything like that except for theater groups you know and with theater groups i was just trying to I did my best performance, I learned my lines, I tried to learn my blocking properly, you know, that kind of thing. But playing pretend was easier than sports for me. Um, but I definitely get it. Um, many times on this channel and, you know, here at Back in the Deck, we've talked a lot about simple games versus in-depth games. One of the most popular games out right now is called um, Cards Against Humanity. And that game gets broken out at every party because it's easy to play drunk. And I get it. A steep learning curve can be challenging. And one of the things I notice with that steep learning curve and that avoidance of trauma is we play a lot of games as a culture. We've got phone games. We've got our video games, be it console or PC or Switch or, you know, your phone, your tablet, whatever. Um, I stepped out of that a long time ago. I think my very last video game system that I owned was a PlayStation 1, okay? And there are a lot of people that play stuff that I just don't understand. I tried playing a few games and I can't wrap my head around the controller, right? Um... And that's a steep learning curve. But one of the things I noticed is that with a lot of video games, the tutorial level, the learning curves, the learning how to play the games are things that are generally done in solitude. And it seems, and please comment, let me know, but it seems <laughs> like um, there is a huge, huge growing culture of the expectation of get good away from here and come back when you don't need to answer questions. And uh, that scares me. That scares me a lot because um, that leads to a lot of isolation. Um, and I don't really feel like sounding like one of those old people. We're just stuck in our phones, blah, 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 blah. No, 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 we're not, we're not in that. Um, it really, you know, it, it really is one of those things where in order to, um, in order to really interact with someone, you have to already be an expert. So it's like, we're coming up on this age where being a beginner isn't allowed. And where does that leave kids or people moving from one hobby to another or one vocation from another? It's like experts only. And if you're not already a level 18, then go back to school and go away from here. You know, and that's not what hobbies are for. Um, in truth, anthropologically speaking, people are social animals. And um, I get the need for a tribe. I really do. I really do understand the need, the requirement for people, um, for like minds. But there's also a need for new blood. You know, I mean, um, biologically speaking, <laughs> um, you got to spread the genes out, <laughs> you know. But when you're in the same homogenous group of people that already like all the same stuff, and they never alter. Their, their books are closed, their real house are closed. Things get really stale very quickly. But if you drag your feet on anything new because you're avoiding trauma, you can. I mean, everybody I talk to, you know, and everybody watching this, I'm not judging you. I'm really not. What I'm trying to do is warn you on the depth of life that you might be missing out on by accepting new things you know by accepting new things with an open mind um i hate to sound like a parent talking to their kids about broccoli but it's like how do you know you won't like it if you never tried it you know um and again big nerd i'm the guy that really liked broccoli i didn't like a lot of other things but um yeah i mean these are these are some of the things that hit my hit my mind this week and I wanted to talk to you guys about and see what your experiences are. You know, when it comes to
playing new games or having new experiences, do you go into it with a real open mind saying, not necessarily enthusiasm, but with a lack of external trepidation, okay? Um, and what about the people around you? Like, are you in friend groups and friend circles that are open to new experiences? You know, that, that's, that's a really big question. Are, are they open to something that's not the thing that they are already doing? Because part of being friends, part of being close to people are sharing and exchanging passions. And as time moves on, I mean, we're a month away from the beginning of the second decade of a new century and a new millennium. It seems that we are becoming far more focused on holding on to our identity so hard because it seems that we're afraid of being lost in the shuffle of, you know, this is the thing I like, but if I like what you like, then I can't like what I like anymore. And I see these as a lot of walls with my wizard's eyes. I see a lot of people boxing themselves in and boxing in other people. And when that happens, everyone's behind walls. And I don't know if you've ever tried to talk to someone through the bathroom door, but things tend to get jumbled, you know, like replace the toilet paper turns into, I don't know, um, take out the maple, you know, something like that. So that's um that's what i wanted to talk to you guys about today the second thing and this is this is going to be the last thing is um the copa thing all right um i'm not going to go in depth because there are youtubers out there that are way better than i am and have a much better understanding about this but essentially um youtube prioritizes the people that get paid through going through that um, through going through that platform. Okay. That is one of the things that they do. Um, so if there are people that are making a living, they make a living by YouTube selling ad space on their videos. Think old TV. Oh, think network TV. Okay. Um, and one of the huge things that goes with that is, um, if your content is too edgy, if there's too many curse words, if there's too much stuff going on, then um advertisers will pull out and youtube will be like sorry man we can't pay you for that so and that's the thing on one hand on another hand um this new thing that came down was youtube became very popular with children under 12. um and it's easy it's easy to understand we got people playing all the video games that they play um there is a youtube kids for really little kids but no one uses it i mean why would you watch YouTube Kids when you can log on to your parents' computer and use their account and see everything, you know? Um, so now a big thing happened with the government. There was a fine because YouTube admitted that kids use YouTube a lot. <laughs> and not all of their content, well, none of their content really, is suitable for kids under 11 years old so if you got 10 year olds watching pg-13 stuff somebody's got to be held accountable so now when um when we upload videos on youtube we have to ask the question we get asked the question is this video meant for children okay if the videos are meant for children they turn off the chat and they turn off the comment sections to protect the kids from creepers that are out there and I'm all for that okay but now that puts us in a position as to as much as I want what we do here to be suitable for the whole family if we do something or one of you guys leaves a comment during the chat that's way over the top um, and I or my moderator doesn't catch it then I could be fined $42,000, <laughs> you know, that's the new policy. If, um, if YouTube sees something that says it's for kids and ends up not being for kids, it gets demonetized. If it says that it's not for kids, but it's too 
edgy, too over the, or if it says it's not for kids, um, and it's too child friendly, um, then there could be a $42,000 fine per video, okay, per video that this happens. So on one hand, I can't be too wholesome. On another edge, I can't be too edgy. And since I don't have a very clear understanding of what that line is, we're switching platforms. <laughs> um, you know, at least for a little while, the internet is fluid and um, things get changed. So this is where we're gonna be for a little while. Um, like I said, it's weird, it's complicated. I don't know um, how to do things in a way that isn't too child friendly or too adult. I want to reach the whole family because I'm trying to, honestly, I'm trying to make a better world as far as how we interact with each other. So I need the message to get out to as many people as possible. I just can't afford the fines if something happens. You dig? So that's going to be one of the things. I hope you guys enjoy the music um, playing throughout um, throughout the show. I, I really do. I, I'm trying something a little new, you know. Um, we've got a lot of stuff coming down the pike for 2020, um, a total revamp. We were in the middle of revamping and getting next year's schedule together when this whole government thing hit. So we, it was very much a, we got hit before bracing for impact. Um, but with that, I'm going to call this episode to a close because it was really disorganized this week. And for that, I'm really sorry. And I'm sorry. Hey, you new people that just came in. Um, we talked about a lot of stuff, so you guys can watch the video again. Um, I'm probably going to put footage of this up on YouTube and I'm going to put this video up on Facebook so that people know what is going on. But in the meantime, um, I want to thank you guys for showing up. Super big thanks to Boom Chicka Boom 510 over in the chat um, for holding it down. She's also our highest paying patron right now because she is awesome. And, um, you know, so I really appreciate what she does on that thing. And she is on the tier on our Patreon that states very clearly um if you hit this tier then you're mentioned in every video every single video that we do on every platform so we appreciate that if you guys want that kind of shout out just head on over to um ooh, ah, a little gassy ah there we go a little belch um just head on over to patreon.com slash bid underscore p um we will not have the merchandise store up by Christmas. I'm sorry. I, I tried. I tried really hard. Really, really hard. But we just don't have the backstop to fulfill enough orders. So we'll have it up at the beginning of the year. So with your gaming stuff, um, you know, we're, we will make something happen on that. But in the meantime, um, thank you guys so much for showing up. It means a lot. Uh, we're back on Twitch. I think we're happier here anyway. And, um, yeah, so we'll just do that whole thing. In the meantime, you guys can send us an email over at backinthedeck at gmail.com. That's B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K at gmail.com. Hit us up on the YouTube um, at BidP or Back in the Deck. You can search for either one of those. Subscribe and like for the stuff that we're going to be doing over there. Um, follow us on Twitter. You guys will know what we're working on. You guys will see the pictures of the sets that we're building and a lot of the stuff that we're moving forward with and on. So that is going to be super awesome and really fun. Um, head on over to Facebook. Um, on the Facebook, you can join Deckers on the Book. And here is the really cool thing about the Deckers on the Book is they are some of our exclusive-ish, um, some of our exclusive-ish, um, members. So, uh, we do a lot of videos and stuff like that. You know, they get all of our all of our Instagrams and all that stuff really quickly. And of course, you can head over to Instagram. There we go. Head on over to Instagram and um, 
sign up there see what other stuff we're doing what community centers and stuff we're working out i want to put more pictures and stuff up um with boop, 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 all of the work that we're doing and trying to bring games to the disenfranchised one of the complications that we have is a lot of the people don't want their kids on the internet because of creepers and things like that so it's a real thing and i respect that because i gotta get to the kids to open their minds up with a lot of this stuff but with that i'm gonna say thank you guys for popping by and remember if anybody tells you that you can't like what you like because of the circumstances of your birth be it race religion creed gender identity sexual orientation your disabilities or your budget you just tell them that we said to take those cards and put them back in the deck this is solar gray the cinematic source we're saying thank you guys for joining me on the dark side of the room